Chapter 1. Lost in the Wasteland Well, it's official, Dave thought, staring blankly at the map in his hands. I'm lost in a desert. For the last six hours, Dave Toriyama has wandered around the wasteland south of Central City. To his credit, he did start out with both a map and a general sense that he was moving in the correct direction. But where any other delivery man in UPX would have been able to traverse the dangerous terrain of the wastelands without finding themselves lost, only Dave could end up midday in between the sand dunes of the southern desert without a clue as to where to go. It is our hero who has managed to lose all sense of direction. Yet in every direction, all Dave could see was an endless series of sand lumps popping up from the ground, like a bizarre series of roller coasters with no beginning or end. Where the mountains to the north had been visible early on in his journey, they were no longer present in the background. Immediately to his right was a cactus, and for a moment, Dave considered this a good sign. Finally, a landmark. Just like that other cactus he passed an hour ago. Wait, does that cactus look familiar? A frown crossed Dave's face. It's the same cactus, isn't it? This wasn't the first time Dave had gotten lost while on the job. Central City is a complicated set of winding roads and neighborhoods which challenge the most advanced mathematicians in their sense of geometry. At least on this delivery, Dave had yet to trip over something and fall flat on his face. Dignity and grace were difficult concepts for him to embody. The desert heat tore away all moisture from the air, sucking the life out of Dave's mouth. This seemed impossible. The village of Shiel should have been a quick jog away from the city, and somehow he had managed to screw this up. Dave fell to his knees, crumpling the map and screaming loudly to the sky, I'm going to die out here! His voice did not echo. No one and nothing responded. Feel better now? He asked himself. Good. Time to keep walking. Folding the map carefully after one last look, Dave shoved it into his satchel bag hanging across his torso, a standard piece of equipment for any UPX delivery personnel. As the sun slowly rose to the position highest in the sky, Dave found his legs could no longer carry him. Beads of sweat flung off his hair and face as he tumbled into the desert sand and rolled over to stare up at the sun. Is this the end of Dave Toriyama? He asked himself, the last bit of sarcasm exuding past his lips. It was a funny feeling for Dave to be this close to death. His mind had become preoccupied by the sentimental moments of his life while his body roasted under the sun. So distracted was he by the happier memories that he didn't even notice when the looming shadow covering his body and blocked the sun. Hey, Dave angrily snapped at the strange and menacing figure standing over him. Do you mind? You're blocking my light, and I'm just about to get a wicked tan. The figure snorted, a muffled grunt of discomfort and annoyance. Slowly, Dave began to realize what it was that stood over him the deep red hair that covered the body, the beady eyes above the comically large mouth and teeth. It was clear what it was that stood drooling over Dave's weathered body. The creature was a sand yeti. Dave was in deep trouble. The creature gave a loud growl to indicate it had conquered its prey. Dave made a small whimper to indicate he had just peed his pants a little bit. Scurrying as fast as he could, Dave pushed away from the sand yeti and began to run. The Yeti, who seemed to find exquisite joy in the chase, growled and howled as it leapt after Dave in pursuit. See the wastelands, they said. Dave gasped exasperatedly as he ran over the nearest sand dune with the speed of an untrained ostrich. Enjoy the beauty of the world, they said. This is not what I imagined. The narrow gap between Dave and his pursuer closed quickly and before too long Dave could feel the hot breath of the sand yeti on his neck. If he didn't think of something quickly, he would soon become a snack for one of the most deadly creatures in the wastelands. Thankfully for our hero, opportunity presented itself in the shape and size of a large cave opening against a rock wall just beyond the next three dunes. This was it. If Dave could make it to the rock wall ahead, he could slip into the cave and hide from the beast. He knew he could do this, for Dave, long-form running had become his lifestyle. Back in Central City, he was capable of traversing the entire city in under an hour. 
This is what he was born for, and Dave Toriyama was ready to put it all on the line to prove it. Unfortunately for him, the universe had other ideas. His feet pushed off against the sand, and his muscles and his legs burned from exhaustion. Dave felt a terrible and heavy weight pulling against him, the sand kicking up from under his shoes. With every ounce of effort left inside of him, Dave pushed and leapt for the entrance. But in the final moments as he flew through the air, he could feel the energy drain away. He was too tired from his long trek in the desert, and his body was giving up. Careening upon the hardened floor of the cave entrance, all Dave could do was close his eyes and wait. Wait for the Yeti. Wait for his death. Seconds passed. Dave was aware of time as it ticked away, his body prone and laying on the ground. His hands pressed against the back of his head, his eyelids held closed by the dripping fear that had overtaken his body. He waited to hear the sounds of the Yeti tearing into him. Tick, the seconds passed. Talk, there was no sound. Tick, and slowly Dave opened his eyes. What the talk? Dave stared at the silhouette of the beast, poised upon its four appendages and staring back at the terrified delivery boy. The space between the Yeti and the cave entrance seemed wide in retrospect. Shouldn't it have closed the gap? Why hadn't it closed the gap? His mind racing with questions, Dave attempted to ask them of the Yeti. However, with too much adrenaline and fear emanating from his body, the most he could emote was the sound, The Yeti stood still and silent, like a gargoyle atop a building, a sentinel which would not move. As seconds passed, Dave found the courage to pull his legs closer to his midsection. The Yeti did not move. He pushed his body up off the ground, slowly rising. The Yeti's gaze matched his, but the beast did not move. Dave took steps backwards into the darkness of the cave, and with each step he took, the Yeti stood still, silent, staring at the young man. So, I suppose that means I can just... go? The Yeti did not respond. Cool, 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 cool. I'm just gonna... He waved in the general direction of the cave interior. And you'll, you'll just... He waved again in the general direction of the Yeti. The Yeti did not move. Without further conversation, Dave snuck backwards into the darkened cave and around a corner into a tunnel. Moments later, he stuck his head out again to see if the Yeti remained in its position. It had. Taking this as a good sign, Dave dipped into the cave tunnel and began to wander in the darkness. If any thoughts had occurred to him that the Yeti was itself terrified of the cave, then there was no indication that Dave was privy to those thoughts. Perhaps he should have spent more than a moment considering why the Yeti stood silently outside the cave, but Dave was not particularly bright when it came to reading the body language of Wasteland Beasts. I've got a really good feeling about this, thought Dave as he continued further into the cave. The walls of the cave were lined with rocks that seemed to glow a dull blue, giving off just enough light to allow Dave's eyes to adjust to the darkness and see the tunnel in front of him. He stepped carefully down the path, reaching out to judge the distance of the walls from his body. Each step echoed down the tunnel, bringing back enough resonance to prove that the tunnel did indeed continue for longer than Dave was comfortable with. At least Hosen isn't here, he mused to absolutely no one around him. I bet he'd be laughing at me, asking how I could navigate in the darkness. Dave frowned. "Uh Uh-oh, looks like you'll have to go slower, little buddy, he mocked in the voice of his best friend. Don't trip and fall. You're not good at that whole dignity and grace thing. It was absolutely ridiculous. He'd only done that twice before. It's not like he fell on every delivery. Time passed, and a bright source of light at the end of the tunnel grew from a dim sum to a large order. Dave chuckled, realizing he was hungry. After what felt to him as an eternity, Dave arrived in a large cavern with torches lit in a circle around the chamber. Embrasures in the walls revealed mummified corpses, and handmade banners draped alongside each of these graves marked the name of the dead. This was not an ordinary cavern in a cave in a desert and a wasteland apocalypse. This was a room to honor the dead. This was a mausoleum. Wow, this... 
This is incredible. Dave stood, shocked at the sight before him. We don't do this back home in Central City. I, I wonder who... His utterance was cut short by a gust of wind which blew against the torches. Dave pivoted on his feet, turning to see a stairwell which led out of the cavern and upwards into the dark beyond. This was where the gust of wind had come from. I bet that leads to whoever made this place, hoped our young man. Taking one final look back at the bodies, Dave closed his eyes for a moment of silence. He showed the dead his respect, knowing full well how easily the desert could take a soul. By the time Dave had gone up the stairs, his presence had faded from the memory of the stone walls. Only the last few echoes of his shoes against the stairwell could be heard until once again the dead slept in silence and in peace. With only a minute or two having passed, Dave reached the top of the stairs to find a large wooden door. Through the cracks, he could see the light of the sun attempting to peek in. Pushing open the door, Dave shielded his eyes from the sun. The warm, harsh desert atmosphere smacked our hero in the face, and almost immediately Dave wished he had remained inside the cool, dry cave. A gust of wind swept up and swirled some sand against Dave's body. It was a ballet of mini tornadoes, whipping here and there while only reaching the height of a very short horse. Almost there, he stated, confidently, for in front of him stood a stone archway with ancient writing upon it. The stones themselves had started to crumble many years ago, leaving parts of the archway broken, littering the ground. The markings were strange to Dave, and he felt that only someone more brilliant than he could interpret them. But to be fair, he had failed ancient symbology while in school. It was that know-it-all Brian who always got top marks on his homework. Stupid Brian, Dave cursed, to no one in particular. The wind ignored him. Beyond the archway, Dave could see a small village, a sign just beyond the stones that read, Shael. The homes were small desert huts made mostly out of sand and the tears of hard work. These were very different from the buildings of the city. But this was his destination, after all. With everything this day had brought him, David managed to find the village and survive the dangers of the wasteland. He had made it at last. With a smile on his face, Dave confidently strode forward, glad that soon he could finish his delivery and head back home. This was an exciting moment and was due a level of expression. To that end, Dave attempted to recite a small congratulatory remark he had crafted before he left Central City. Today, I take the first steps in becoming the greatest delivery boy in the wastelands. Here at the gates of Shiel, I find that... Tripping on a piece of the archway as he walked underneath, Dave fell face first onto the ground. Dignity and grace were concepts he truly had difficult understanding. Dave sighed. Yeah, let's never speak of this to anyone. End of chapter.